said that since I have been Lieutenant Governor. Because what you're able to see here every January, this is Atlantic City. This is, you are Atlantic City. And uh, I'm happy to see a packed house, as always. And, you know, it's wonderful for us across institutions, across, across communities in Atlantic County, uh, to gather here in Atlantic City to hear the state of Atlantic City. And you know that when uh, Governor Murphy and I assumed office, Governor Murphy made major commitment that the state would not turn its back on Atlantic City. Atlantic City is, and for those who don't know, our premier tourism destination in this state. And I just want to run through uh, what we have done in 2022 because we're continuing that work into 2023. And there are three things we heard from everyone across all sectors. A clean Atlantic City, a safe Atlantic City, a diversification of the economy in Atlantic City, and development for the future. And I want to touch on a few of those things. Collaboration is what has helped us uh, accomplish what we've been able to accomplish. And marching into 2023, it's a collaboration that is going to permit us to build upon these things. Uh, last year, local government services, and I definitely want to recognize, acknowledge, and ask her to stand, Jacqueline Suarez Esquire, who heads up the Division of Local Government Services. When the Municipal Stabilization and Revitalization Act was created by the legislature, they implanted in the division responsibility for the day-to-day -day oversight of fiscal, personnel, and a broad variety of things in the city. That rests with Jacqueline and her staff. I also want to acknowledge and identify Rick Riccadelli and Phil Gonzalez, who are on the ground here with Atlantic City extensively, helping to move the Atlantic City agenda forward. Yes. So Jacqueline's division, together with Stockton University, the City of Atlantic City, and the Atlantic City Police Department, have created what is called City Stat ComStat. And you probably have heard of it uh, nationally. What these programs do is to create a transparent approach to government focusing on poli policing, community safety, and community in participation in reporting back issues that are identifiable that need to be worked on. City staff was the brainchild of the Baltimore City Municipal Government. The program permits the mayor's engagement and management team to track, analyze, diagnose, and improve the results that are produced by every single city agency. Data-driven. Government isn't as it once was. Our decision making and what we do must be data driven. And that is what the city staff is designed to do. It also allows for residents to meet regularly with the city department heads to address quality of life concerns. The purpose of city staff is to help and motivate the city's department managers to achieve more and to produce 
better result. The result is that anyone who lives, works, or studies in Atlantic City can attend these regularly scheduled meetings to raise their concerns, whether it's a quality of life issue or any alleged criminal activity. Comstack was pioneered by the New York City Police Department. This program is designed to hold police managers accountable for their performance. Productive policing uses computer systems these days to analyze large sets of data to help decide where to deploy police or to identify individuals who are purportedly more likely to commit or be a victim of a crime. And you know, you hear all law enforcement professionals say, and I listen to the mayor of Atlantic uh, to a New York on a daily basis, if the stats project one thing, the most important thing is perception and what people perceive and how people feel. And we are focusing on that through the use of ComStat and CityStat. Uh, Jacqueline and her team have worked very closely with Police Chief James Sarkos. And uh, you know that on the 1st of January, Chief Sarkos and the, uh, his union leadership launched uh, a new deployment plan for Atlantic City. What this deployment plan will do is raise the visibility of police in neighborhoods and in the business corridors. It is reconfiguring the way the shifts work and it is designed to make certain that police visibility and focus is happening on a daily basis. And I want to thank Chief Sarkos for working closely with our people and our team at DCA to make the implementation of the plan a reality. Please give him a round of applause. <laughs> we have also suggested an extensive police training program for every officer so that everyone in the department is on the same page. And they will be working with the J. Harris Police Training Institute to develop a curriculum uh, to uh, get that move forward. We also want to identify the Atlantic City Board of Education, Mayor Small, uh, the City Business Administrator, and the Atlantic City Police Department who've worked uh, to help us expand and focus on our class three officers and that, that program that has been initiated. And we now have class three officers working with 11 schools within the Atlantic City School District. You know, in Atlantic City, as the premier tourist destination in the state. There is no other shore community that can emulate or replicate what we have here. We have unbridled length of shoreline that has yet to be focused on. And I was so pleased at the governor's state of the state address when he announced inclusion in his budget for 24 will be a $100 million appropriation that shore communities can apply for to get funding to deal with their boardwalks. And I know we have to be fair with the distribution of those funds but I am known to put my finger on the scale. <laughs> I am known to do that. The other exciting thing uh, that Governor Murphy, I think, uh, announced uh, that will also be coming through the Division of Local Government Services 
are a number of different grant initiatives that will benefit our shore communities and most definitely the city of Atlantic City. I know you're going to love this one because I love this one more than anything. The city is entering into a partnership to repair potholes. I know that that is important to everyone here. And uh, the city is going to enter into a shared services agreement with four Atlantic County municipalities to buy a pothole repair machine. And the pop, this, you might think this is like insignificant, but right around Atlantic City, you will know how important this is. The pothole repair machine uh, will be purchased at no cost to Atlantic City, and it will go a long way in helping the city with its focus on uh, its, its uh, city paving program, also working in collaboration collaboration with our New Jersey Department of Transportation. We have a lot on scale for the city, and I know you keep up with what's going on. I know a lot of you are in the development and the business sector, but we know that Atlantic City holds the potential to reinvent itself, and we're on a trajectory to do that. <coughs> Uh, I want to thank all of you for your continued <coughs> commitment and investment in the city of Atlantic City. <coughs> we are going to see phenomenal things happen out of this town in the next decade and the decades going forward. And I just want to assure you that Governor Murphy and I are not looking in the rear view mirror. We have three years left to go in this administration, and significant things and initiatives will be focused on this task. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for very inspiring me. Uh, can't wait to see all those chains in place for 2023. I hope you didn't steal too much of the mayor's thunder there. Uh, but uh, I'm sure he has plenty more to offer uh, at his uh, address in a little bit. Uh, what, uh, we're gonna have dinner soon, uh, lunch soon, I should say. One of the things that the NBCA looks forward to doing with that community I mentioned earlier is to work with the new community development uh, people that, uh, organizations that are performed to see the city that are uh, in the different areas section of Atlantic City, including uh, the, the uh, Chelsea section, which is uh, headed by Yishu Defco, uh, the Dunkown section, the Midtown section, uh, which is headed by Atlantic here, and then the last section, which is headed uh, in the end of the Let me know if I'm in your way. I think we're going to get him. They have through the state. Uh, yes, I am. Thank you. Through the state, they may be established. You see, you see that you have to enable national grants for money that's presented to them, and to also fix the city in the way that the NPCA hopes to work with them in the future to make that happen. So uh, thanks to those yeah. group, uh, individual corporations and companies and schools uh, for making that CDC thing happen. And especially to Jim Rutella, who might be a awesome hero of Atlantic City. Awesome. Uh, you know Jim, you know that he's getting these grants for Atlantic City, and it's just so important how we form the CDC. So Jim, if you're here, uh, thank you so much. All right. Enough for me. Next, our community relations support. You know, I'm going to introduce this guy, Gary Hill. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. You did a great job. Again, I want to thank everybody for coming. And I just wanted to give you a quick report where some of your support and money goes to. After 32 years, that's a long time, we are still here, still strong and growing. We have given over $425,000 to area charities and community involvement and projects. We're very proud of that. As Alex said, we've also given over $300,000 to teachers and students in our community. Again, we're very proud of that. And that is only because of your support and your continued relationships with us. So we thank you for that. We will be doing, as you have heard from Alex, our spring scholarship event. That will be April 27th. At the Claridge, we can't wait to go and support them. They're here somewhere in the back there in the Claridge. Great property, they, they reinvested quite a bit in the city to be back there. 
Also, uh, we just had our 31st annual event honoring our own superheroes for the business community and for the nonprofit community. It was a Golden Nugget. I uh, know Golden Nugget's here, so I have to thank you for hosting that in the fall. They did an amazing job. But more importantly, it's building relationships with small business, large business, political leaders, and community leaders that we feel is our strength. It is only because of your support and your involvement that we can continue to grow in our 32nd year. So enjoy your lunch, and we'll be hearing from our mayor very shortly. Thank you. Happy New Year.